Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Lunch and Learn session talking about suicide prevention and awareness. For those of you who don't know, I am Dr. Jennifer Lee, the director of the Johnson C. Smith University Health Plex, and I am here with Ms. Tiara Parsons, director of counseling. Hey, everybody. Um, so today what we would kind of want to do is just, you know, talk about a very important topic of, of suicide prevention. Um, and just in case you're not able to be here live or you come in in the middle of it, it'll be posted to the JCSU Student Affairs YouTube channel. So go subscribe. Absolutely. Do that today. All right. So Ms. Parsons, let's get right down to it. Um, first, I want to ask you, how would you define mental health and what does mental health mean to you? That's a great question. Uh, so my definition of mental health is really simple. It is doing what is necessary to safely take care of your mind. Um, I added the word safely because sometimes people think that just ending it all is, a, you know, I'm that's what it's going to take. But doing what you need to do as far as reaching out for support, et cetera, to take care of your mind. Um, and it's important so that you can function and navigate and enjoy your life. Um, it means life to me. It equals life. Um, and so that's why I encourage people to prioritize their mental health almost on a daily basis. So, I kind of feel the same way. Um, so why do you think it is, having said that, why do you think it is important to prioritize your mental health, especially, you know, we're in Corona time. So yeah. what, what makes it more important to prioritize our mental health now? Yeah. So we have a lot going on. And if y'all don't know us, we're just really here to have an informal, just one-on-one -on -one conversation to tell you what's real about this topic. And when you prioritize your mental health, you think like, this is important. Like my mind is important. My brain is important. Think about this, Jen. Your, your brain, like your thoughts kind of swirl around in your brain, right? Your brain is what keeps you alive. Your brain stem controls your functions like the breathing, di digesting food, circulating blood. You're in the whole health world. So it's that important. And so if you consider that, then you really do need to prioritize your mental health because I will say this boldly, that there is no health without mental health because it's integrated. We work hand in hand, even with our activities in our events, we, we, we look to do things together because we, we both work as, as a team. So that's why it's so important. I, I agree. And so, like I said, you know, since we are in these times of Corona, we've heard a lot about self-care. Yeah. Um, so how would you define self-care and why and how is it so important to maintaining your mental health? Yeah. So self-care is my favorite, although I think that now it's it's morphed into something like like a thing now like we overuse it but for me self-care is whatever brings peace and it could look different on any day so some people it's hair and nails and pampering some people it's going away for a weekend in a cabin and spending time in nature some people it's binging on netflix but I will say that the ingredients, the main ingredients to self-care are healthy boundaries because it's important whenever you um, have the courage to say no. And you don't have to do that in a rude way. Um, you can say, I don't have the capacity to do that today, maybe not today, maybe another day because you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed. As much as I would love to do X, Y, and Z, I'm unable to commit to that right now. But next month, I may be able to. Or you might say, if not me, let me let me introduce you to Jen. You know, but I've already checked with Jen to see if you know she's able to do that. So <laughs> it's just really having those healthy boundaries to bring you that sense of peace so you can recharge. And I'll say, if if we don't recharge, we can't be much of anything to other folks. And we all have a lot going on. So know yourself, know your body, and be confident to say that I, I can't do that right now. I have to take care of me. And we've heard it time and time again. When you're on the plane, right? Yeah, I'm going there. 
And then the, <laughs> the pilot comes over the overhead and he says, you know, if something happens, then you put your mask on first before you help someone else. It's the right. same scenario. You have to make sure you take care of yourself first to be the best version of yourself for someone else. Right. And just to kind of, I always think about myself and how I self-care. Um, I am an introvert. Mm -hmm. Introvert tonight. Introvert um, tonight. So being able to say no um, is something that I had to learn mm -hmm. um, because I will say all throughout college, um, for those of you who don't know, I'm a Smith alum, class of 2008. Um, all through college, I did literally everything. Um, and I really only learned how to say no in the last couple of years when I went back to school to get my doctorate. And you have no other choice but to tell people no. Um, you, you know I know, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't make you a bad person to say no. Um, and especially now, again, going back to the Rona, um, yeah. you know, being asked to go out or go, let's go sit down at a restaurant. Let's, I, let's not. Um, I can't do that right now just because I feel more comfortable yes. not yes. going to a restaurant yeah. or, you know, just, just finding your ways and picking and choosing kind of what you say no to, but saying no is, is super important guys. Mm -hmm. Like say mm -hmm. no, if you really don't want to do something, you are not obligated to tell people yes. And especially family. Mm -hmm. even though they will have you believing otherwise yeah if if something is not in your wheelhouse to do please don't do it yeah now what we're saying is if you are employed we we are not telling you to tell your boss like no what we're saying is to communicate with your supervisor kind of what you need so that they can understand how they can accommodate whatever it is, because you right. may have some responsibilities and it's important to, to respect that relationship. We're just saying, know yourself and know how to communicate what you need. Yes. And me, I, I was addressing the personal aspect, yes. only do that personally. Yes. Only, now, personally, yes, because we know people can kind of <laughs> wonder, like, are they talking about personal professional? We're talking about both, but we're leaning in on both perspectives, so. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so now that we've actually we've talked about saying no, um, let's talk about burnout. What is burnout and how can, how can students kind of address that for themselves? Okay, so I like to break it down. That, that's what I do for my students, okay? Burnout is sort of like stress that has overstayed its welcome. It's almost like the cousin or the friend that always comes to cook out and never brings anything but <laughs> takes home four or five plates all the time all and then need gas money when they get home like <laughs> it, it's a whole lot you know but it literally is when you are emotionally mentally and physically drained you're exhausted right and you're exhausted because of the demand everything you know everything's happening all at once you know but imagine everything's happening all at once every week every moment of every day you know and so and that doesn't necessarily have to be like all bad things happen you could have a lot of great things happening all at once you know you know you feel overwhelmed but it's learning again to know when i need to practice self-care when i need to communicate my needs um and when i need to maybe dig a little deeper you know because you may discover a strength that you didn't know about yourself and you're like man i'm glad i didn't give up so it's kind of finding that balance between those things um but burnout is not a, a you know a great thing um but i think we have power over burnout and we want to empower our students to practice self-awareness so that you don't have to go down that street more often than not so okay. i have nothing to add that was great well thank you that's how i would that's how i would have talked about it too <laughs> Um, and actually, you know, I'm the physical health side. Mm -hmm. Um, and so a lot of times mental health is stigmatized, particularly in certain communities, um, or it's just really not talked about as much as physical health. And, you know, you mentioned earlier, the two go hand in hand. Yeah. So yeah. why do you think mental health is so stigmatized and, and not talked about? Right. So that's a great question. I hear that question all the time. And 
to make it plain, I believe it's because physical health may be viewed as you're going to go do something good for yourself. You're going to the doctor to make sure everything is good. But if you go to a mental health therapist, you must be going because something is wrong or because you are crazy, you know. And so the thing is, you're doing both. You Preventative physical health is what you would advocate for than right. going to go get, you know, reactive or getting treated after the fact. Right. So if you go to just go check in with a therapist maybe once a month just to say, hey, this is what's going on, to kind of get a strategy, kind of just talk, get whatever off your chest, then in the meantime, you're learning the tools to address what may come up, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that the stigma is there because of the right, wrong, good, bad, crazy, not crazy situation that we deal with. Um, but at the end of the day, you are 100% responsible for yourself, your physical health, mental, all the eight dimensions of wellness, spiritual, emotional, occupational, the whole nine. So we're just encouraging you to say, hey, I don't care what people think about what I'm doing with my life because if you are somewhere in your house depressed, it's very rare that somebody's going to knock on the door and say, hey, dot, 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 not unless they live with you or you talk to them on a regular basis, you have to know that taking care of yourself is your priority and responsibility. And we are empowering you to do both today, to take care of not only your mental health, but also your physical health. And I'll, and I'll kind of conclude on this point by saying um, also, Jen, that if you have a physical health condition, it could translate as a mental health condition. It could translate as hallucinations and delusions, but you may have an overactive thyroid or some other things going mm -hmm. on. So going to be seen by both providers is what's going to get you that overall wellness. Right. And I, I actually want to just really nail down on something that you said. Um, it's very important that with wellness in every aspect, mental, social, mm -hmm. physical, that we are not only being reactive. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, I don't see some people until you, you know they've hit that morbidly obese level or they've started taking insulin because they they have grown into being a type two diabetic because of their weight. Um, in everything wellness, it's super important to be proactive yeah. and kind of help eliminate those issues from even becoming issues. Yeah. Um, and and what you said is so right. A lot of, of physical conditions impact your mental health. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, things like being morbidly obese or, or even having high blood pressure can translate into depression and anxiety. Um, so they are linked together, but it is so important to be proactive instead of reactive. So I just wanted to highlight that. Mm -hmm. And shameless plug, it's also important for y'all to be proactive in regards to getting your financial clearance. You have one day to do so. So please take care of your business. One. The admissions office, okay? All right, so, and we're moving. <laughs> Shameless plug, accomplished. Right. <laughs> All right, so, you know, talking about mental health and why it's not talked about, what kind of stereotypes about mental illness or mental health problems bother you the most as a practitioner? Um, it's, I, I think the main one is that, that if you go seek support that you're weak. Mm. Like, like you're weak if you don't go get help because you will physically be weak. You won't have the motivation to even go see a provider. We've seen so many students that come in and we've watched them transform. And that's in the health plex and that's in the counseling center and any other unit. We've seen students just kind of come in and we help, we work with them to break things down into more manageable parts manageable part and we allow them to find their own strength that is so rewarding you are not weak because you are going to go do something good for yourself if right. you could do anything during our time today we just want to change the narrative the smith way because i believe that we are doing things different on this campus we have a unique approach to mental wellness and we just want to empower you to say you are absolutely strong. You are Smith strong whenever you take care of your mental health in a proactive way. So I think the weak, the weakness aspect is what bothers me the most. I've gotten past the crazy thing because 
right. that's just that, you know, the, the media influences a, a lot of that. Um, we can't do much about that, but to change our own conversations, but the weakness part is what bothers me the most. I, I actually agree with that. You know, I think of it as working out. You don't, if you want to, you know, become stronger, you just don't go willy nilly yeah. by yourself and not ask anybody. You yeah. come, you, or you go to a train a professional to help you so it's yeah. it's that way you get strong is going to get help yeah and um, you're right. you know, when I first started working out these past few months I felt weak initially because my body was not used to what was going on like I'm like oh my gosh like I'm having a heart attack but it's it's adjusting to what's happening and eventually I went from a 15 minute workout to a 30 minute workout to hour okay. workout you know, and so, um, so yeah, so I totally agree. You just start someplace and you'll get stronger over time. Yeah. Okay. I want to dive a little bit deeper um, into kind of the, the meat of the conversation. And, um, and that is, that is suicide and suicide prevention. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the, the warning signs and symptoms of suicide that we need to be on the lookout for in our friends, family, whoever? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so if you are, the viewers, if you are not aware, this month is National Suicide Prevention and Awareness Month. And I will start by saying exactly what suicide is. I just want to make it plain. So suicide means ending your life. And the way, um, you know, we want to approach this is that we want to normalize the conversation. That saying that word is not like, oh, you know, oh my goodness, suicide. You know, we want to make sure that you know that that's what it means. And so, What's most important is that you understand that there is hope on the other side of the storm. And so the storm, meaning all these warning signs, like if you're feeling hopeless or helpless or worthless, if you talk about ending your life, if you look for ways to follow through, um, if you talk about being a burden to someone um, quite frequently, if you start isolating yourself and all these things feel intense, it's sort of like you can't breathe, you feel kind of suffocated, then that may be the time to reach out to um, have someone help you kind of explore those things. Um, because once students come, or if anyone comes, if you go to a clinician or a pastor or a holistic care provider, whatever your choice, they just kind of help you kind of bring that balloon down a little bit. So that that one last thing doesn't come and pop it, and then now we have a situation. Um, and we pride ourselves at Johnson Hopkins University by being very, very strong and passionate about our crisis and prevention so we can prevent um, these occurrences from happening. So if, if you are, are feeling or you know someone who have had some of those um, warning signs, then you can also reach out to the counseling center so that we can kind of help you um, address whatever the situation is. So what is the best way to approach or support someone um, who we've maybe noticed doesn't seem like themselves? And I, I, yeah. I use the air quotes because uh -huh. that's not always the best um, description, yeah. but you, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I think it just starts with just being nice. And, you know, we have to do or make a, it would be helpful if we made a better effort to just be nicer to people to be careful about what you say and how you say it to people because you never know what that person is experiencing. And some folks may not mean it, that may just be who they are, or they may be learning to offer grace to people, but you start by being nice so that that person wants to be around you. Or if you do reach out, they'll say, oh yeah, that person's always been cool and they feel more comfortable kind of connecting. And then that creates that pathway, you know, to get that help. So just start by just being a nice person. Um, and if you have those more complicated cases where you have been a nice person and you've done everything, um, that's when you just pick up the phone and call someone um, that's trained in that area to kind of address that situation. I'm going to want to add to your, to your point. Yeah. We'll add to it. Um, in terms of being nice, um, I think especially now in this digital era um, and social media, you know, digital wellness is becoming more and more popular to talk about. Mm -hmm. You also need to be nice on the keyboard. You know, keyboard warriors, 
keyboard gangsters, if you wouldn't say it to someone in person, don't type it. Please don't. Just just don't. don't. That is just as as impactful as saying it It to someone directly because they can read it over and over and over again. So really be mindful of what you're saying, what you're posting, and all of that kind of stuff on social media as well. I will agree 100% because I've seen some stuff already and stuff travels. We have a very small community here at Dr. T. Smith an even tighter global network and if someone sees it they don't forget other people don't forget and so another person hasn't had a fair chance to get to know that person so just be careful about what you post because you don't want to live with knowing that it was your post that influenced somebody to make a different decision for their life so yeah yeah i agree i agree um, so what advice would you give someone who's wanting to seek help but is afraid to? Yes. Two words. Be brave. Be brave. What are you going to lose? If you go and it works out, then fantastic. You know, if you go and it doesn't work out, we can help find something else that might be able to help you or another person. We realize that we are not the end all be all of support. If you are not feeling any one of us, then uh, you can be connected with somebody else. You can start with us via email, text message, you know, whatever's going to work for you, but just be brave. Everybody's cool and laid back. We're professionals, but we're approachable. And that's what makes us unique at the Counseling Center. We have our colleagues on board in case we hear or see that you may need um, a health assessment um, I'm probably saying it wrong, from the health plex or uh, something to go on with your um, advising. You know, we keep our network within um, tight, so just be brave. Um, all you're going to do is win. You know, we don't take L's at the counseling center or, or on, on our campus, so just be brave. And, and I um, also to point, um, you know, if you don't know anybody in the counseling center, you know, everyone else on campus does and you're at least cool with one person on campus who can get you to these other folks like Ms. Parsons who who this is their area Um, and just know that the person that you trust on campus to open up to is not going to direct you to someone that they don't trust Mm -hmm. and I will say that everyone on campus trusts the counseling center with no hesitation so you like she said, if, if you can't find help there, they can get you help elsewhere. But all in all, our counseling center is fantastic. Well, we so if you get if you you know get that, well, of course, because so but much. it's true though, and I think you know so much. You know, sometimes people people come to me and want to talk about stuff, and I'm that's not my area. Mm-hmm. I can listen. I can be nice, um, but at the end of the day, they really want. To really help them, I have to send them to yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so just just trust our counseling center. They know what they're doing. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we talked about how awesome the counseling center is. So what are some of the things that we are doing on campus to raise awareness about mental health? Yeah, um, great question. We're, we are heavily involved now on social media. We actually love it and enjoy it. It's a great way to engage with our students and our friends on campus, our colleagues. We share each other's events and programs. For example, our Grinding for Wellness program we have with Dr. Barksdale and athletes. Um, any type of live production that we're doing with Residence Life or like the Health Plex. And so um, all of our programs are there. Um, we would love to be on campus to do some of our bigger things, um, but hopefully that will come soon in the spring. But what I do want to take the time to highlight is our Smith Eye Care, which is our 24-7-365 public health care service, where students are able to access physical health support and mental health support um, around the clock. If you um, go to Smith Eye Care, let me get, my, let me get it right, www.smithite.care, and um, download the app so we want you to get situated we don't want you to have to look for 
the website when you're in a situation because although we may not be there like you know you know like this you know you have that access to that that service that's around the clock if you're at 3 a.m and you're feeling the kind of way now let me let me back say we are there okay <laughs> let me just say that all right but if it's just 3 a.m and you have something on your mind and you just want to vent then you can use that service and the great thing is if you download the app by september 30th you are automatically entered to receive a 50 dollar amazon gift card they'll pull from a draft um like a random sample like a raffle look i, I said a random sample y'all <laughs> have research on my mind you uh, you know chosen to possibly receive one of those gift cards so we're excited about that um, and we welcome any student. If you have any ideas of what you want to see, um, then we welcome you to reach out so that we could um, do some of those programs as well. Okay. Now, actually, let me ask you this, and this is kind of one of my one of my final questions. With the Smithite Care, um, does Smithite Care, you know, highlight resources for them in their area um, and their geographical location? Um, and and what is available in their actual immediate kind of Circle? Yeah, that's a great question. It does actually. Wherever you're at in the in the country, that particular um, coordinator will help find you a clinician in your area, so you don't have to worry about um, not having anyone where you are. And if you're having any problems um, with it, then we ask you to reach out to us so we can kind of help you navigate those barriers because it is a new program. We're just asking everyone to be patient with it. Um, to see what works and what doesn't work. Um, we definitely need you to be financially cleared. You have one day to kind of get that together. But if you're not financially cleared and you need some support, then we can kind of help you kind of swing around some of those things um, because we go the extra mile to help our students. Um, so that's a very good question. And my final question for our fantastic Lunch and Learn session. How, how can students reach your office um, and or schedule an appointment? Yes, so for our office, our number is 704-378-1044, 704-378-1044, or you can email us at counselingoffice at jcsu.edu, counselingoffice at jcsu.edu, or you can hit us up on social media, on Instagram at JCSU Counseling Center. Um, and so one of those ways, reach out to us and we'll get you connected. And we look forward to um, seeing our students and um, collaborating with everyone else. So, yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Um, here's going to be my shameless plug for the Health Plex since okay. we <laughs> work on holistic wellness. Mm -hmm. um, Wednesday and Friday on our JCSU HealthPlex uh, Facebook page and the JCSU Student Affairs YouTube channel. We are having Monday, Wednesday, Friday virtual workouts. You can tune in and watch and do. You don't need any equipment. They are body weight or whatever random things you have in your house because you don't need dumbbells or whatever <laughs> to lift weights and to kind of get that exercise. I know we're all kind of going crazy. Yeah. Zoom and we want to not be on Zoom or wherever, but you got to get it done. Yeah. Um, so that's there's my shameless plug. <laughs> and thank you guys so much for for listening. Thank you again, Miss Parsons, for giving us your time and answering our questions. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Appreciate okay. you. Awesome. All right, and you guys don't be afraid to reach out for real if you ever need anyone or need anything. We are here for you and to help. Have a great day, guys. All right, y'all. Take care. See ya. Bye.